In 1913, the British number theorist G.H. Hardy received a strange letter with his morning tea. It came from far away Madras, India. The sender was a poor Hindu clerk, a two-time college dropout named Srinivasa Ramanujan. The letter contained mathematical formulas so fantastical, so strange, Hardy would later say that they had to be true. No one would have the imagination to invent them. Among mathematicians, that long-ago correspondent, Ramanujan, holds mystic status. Among us lay people, not so much. Well, a new movie is trying to change that. The Man Who Knew Infinity tells the story of this outsider mathematician who died at just 32 years of age. In his short life, Ramanujan filled uh, three notebooks with strange enigmatic formulas that continued to boggle the minds of mathematicians, mathematicians like my next guest. Uh, Ken Ono is the Asa Griggs Candler Professor of Math and Computer Science at Emory University and consultant on the movie The Man Who Knew Infinity. He's also the author of a new memoir co-written with the late Amir Excel, my Search for Ramanujan. Welcome to Science Friday, Dr. Ono. Uh, good afternoon, Ira. Glad to be here. It's a, it's a great story, a great book. The film is, I saw a little bit of it. Let, let's start first with how you first heard about the Ramanujan. This story also involves a letter, right? Oh, boy. Uh, actually, Ramanujan for me is, seems to be nothing but letters. Um, <laughs> I first learned about Ramanujan when I was um, a reticent teenager. I was 16 in 1984. Um, I was about to drop out of high school myself, um, and a letter came to the house. It was April 7th, 1984. I'll never forget it. And it was a letter written to my father from uh, Janaki Amal, uh, a, a woman in her, in her 80s who lived in Madras, who turned out to be the widow of an Indian genius, Ramanujan, who had died 64 years earlier. It was an, wow. You know, right. Well, you, you've called Ramanujan math's greatest anticipator. What, what do you mean by that? Well, so as, as you mentioned a moment ago, Ramanujan died very young at the age of 32. And what he did in his notebooks is he, did, he wrote down formulas which for him were flights of fancy, only t for us to find that as mathematicians of his future, that he wrote down formulas and functions that we've ended up needing. People have won Fields medals for making use of his functions. Um, Fermat's last theorem probably would not have been proven had Ramanujan never lived. The, his legacy goes so far beyond the questions that people were even asking when he was alive. And, and these ideas were not around when he was alive, right. is well, what you're saying. Right. We were, t we're, t we're using his formulas to study black holes today. People didn't even know black holes existed in 1913. Mm -hmm. Ramanujan got into math because of one book. Right? That's in, right. An old math tutoring book. Right. Ramanujan got, it's, it's not a very good book, honestly. It's called A Synopsis of, of Mathematics by a British tutor like G.S. G. S. Carr. Um, and what it is is it's a list of 6,000 theorems and formulas laid out systematically, but uh, with almost no, no text in between. It's, it was something like an almanac of mathematical formulas. And somehow... This, this incomplete list of formulas ignited his passion. And, and he dropped out of college. Twice. He because was, of he, the book. That's right. He was, he, because of this book, he, he felt that the, that the mathematics and the book was, were, they were laid out like puzzles to him, and he needed to finish them and then find formulas of his own. And kind of like a college kid might be addicted to video games, Ramanujan became addicted to finding his own formulas, and as a result, was a very poor student. He didn't do his homework, didn't attend class, and, well, it didn't end up didn't, very well didn't. for him in school, at least. Yeah, and, and then he, uh, Ramanujan writes to the British mathematician G.H. Hardy with some of his formulas, and uh, here's Jeremy Irons as Hardy in the movie, opening Ramanujan's letter in, in the film, The Man Who Knew Infinity. I beg to introduce myself as a clerk in the accounts department. What this time? Quite impressive, really. Someone's gone to a lot of trouble. A Hindu clerk. And who claims he can give meaning to the negative values of the gamma function. Well, without getting into the gamma function, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was in the letter that convinced Hardy that Ramanujan was, was the real deal here? 
Well, it's a fantastic letter for several reasons. First of all, uh, Ramanujan writes in a, in a very humble way. He writes, he begins with the words, I beg to introduce myself as a clerk in the accounts department. I've had no university education. But what followed were seven pages of mathematical scrawl, almost with no words. One of the claims is that if you add up the positive integers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and never stop, well, we all know that that goes to infinity. You can't add up all the positive numbers and get mm -hmm. um, anything other than infinity. But Ramanujan claims, well, not only don't you get infinity, you get a negative number. You get negative 1 12. That seems crazy. But to Hardy, Hardy would have understood that that was actually a brilliant observation. The letter also had some other had mistakes. Um, but amazingly, the letter ended on the ninth page with three formulas, three formulas that were so startling that, Ramon, that Hardy said nobody could have the imagination to invent these formulas. And you know what's true about those three formulas? We didn't figure them out until about four years ago. Wow. So that's how crazy some of the formulas happen to be in his writings. Now, let me play another clip from The Man Who Knew Infinity, and this is Harvey, played again by Jeremy Irons, uh, talking to a Ramanujan played by Dev Patel. Listen, I'm hard on you for your own benefit, so that you can be published. But, sir, you can publish the notebooks and my prime number theorem. You've had them since I arrived. There's nothing I'd like more, but if I was to publish them in their present state, I'd be sent to the lunatic asylum. You, you don't understand these... <laughs> I don't think about this the same way you do. These steps you want, what you want, I do not know how to do. Well, you can just begin by trying your best and see if you don't surprise yourself. So he was not a, a mathematician in the classical sense. Oh, no. A, a professional mathematician. Right. Well, try to remember the time period. This is around 1913, 1914, and India was subjugated by England. And uh, it was quite extraordinary for Hardy to invite an Indian to be a distinguished scholar at, at Cambridge, and in particular, one with no university education whatsoever. So um, Ramanujan, when he was recording his formulas in a notebook, he, was, he might as well have been living in a desert. Mm. Nobody understood him. He didn't know how you did mathematics. But somehow, in the areas of math that he worked in, he was able to basically eclipse the accumulated wisdom of Western Europe, and that was astonishing. Whereas Hardy, the, you know, your image of this distinguished Cambridge professor about you have to go through these courses, you have to earn the right to prove theorems, and there's an actual procedure that one has to follow for uh, when writing up papers. These two, pen, these two men couldn't have been more different in yeah. how they did math from different countries. And uh, never mind that uh, Ramanujan was a, a devout Hindu who said that his ideas came to him as, as visions from a goddess where Hardy is an atheist. Everything about these two men should have meant that they would have been unable to understand each other. And that's one of the beautiful things about this film. It's about how two very different people with the same passion can somehow forge an incredible relationship, no matter, independent of the fact that it was very short. And it's, it's a beautiful film because yeah. of that. And why, why, why was Hardy different than everyone else? Why did he accept Patel? Ah, Ramanujan. Ramanujan, <laughs> right. calling well, the actor, right? So yeah. I write about this, actually, in my book, among other things. Uh, I think Hardy, perhaps, was the only man alive who would have been able to, at that time, to recognize Ramanujan's genius. Um, the, the skill that Ramanujan exhibited in his, his, in, his, in his letters, even if you were to show those letters today to professional mathematicians, maybe only one in a hundred would see the beauty and the importance of the, of the work. Um, what did Hardy know? Hardy was, the, at the time, probably the world's leading analytic number theorist, so he had spent some time thinking about these kinds of objects. And uh, some of the claims Hardy knew and others were so foreign that, well, he felt that he needed to get to the bottom of all that. So he was, he was visualizing all this stuff in his head. And he never wrote down, and that's what upset the, the, the status quo mathematicians. He didn't write the proofs down of right. how he knew what he knew. Well, even to this day, it has to be said that um, paper was very expensive in India. So to have three notebooks was, um, was a luxury for Ramanujan. Mm. So he did most of his work on this, this little slate, 
and his calculations would end up with some sort of result. And all he did was record the result in the notebooks. Um, so there is that component, too. It's not just that he didn't know how to write down proofs. He just yeah. didn't have space yeah. in his notebooks uh, to record his, fu- record his steps. Well, when, when you look at his notebooks, does the math look different from other math? It does. It does. Um, If you happen to see a poster for the film, you can see some of the reproductions of Ramanujan's work, and it's it's beautiful. There are no words. His hand, his handwriting, his script was, it's gorgeous, Hmm. but it's very difficult to figure out what he meant. Um, So, for example, halfway through the first notebook, you'll find that he writes out the first thirty digits of pi. Why would it take Ramanujan half a notebook to get to the first 30 digits of pi? Um, and it turns out that nothing on that page around it seems to have anything to do with pi. It's all a mystery. <laughs> yeah. uh, you learned about Ramanujan from your, from your dad when you were 16, right? Now, not, That's not long right. after you drop out of high school, too. About that time. Yeah. So the letter, when the letter came to my house, I'd never heard of Ramanujan before. And... Um, the letter thanked my father for making a small gift to help pay for a bust of Ramanujan. And my father, who was a very stoic man, was, was, it was a very emotional moment, moment for him. You see, when Ramanujan died in 1920, his widow was promised uh, a statue. The government promised to erect a statue in Ramanujan's honor, and they never came through. And by the early 1980s, the mathematicians of the world got wind of this, and uh, they, they had a fundraising campaign, and my father hmm. was one of many who made a contribution. So the letter, presumably Janaki Amal sent hundreds of them. It was just a form letter, really. But it was an opportunity for my father to tell me about this legendary man I'd never heard of before. And to tell you the truth, that was the beginning of the healing between the two of us. Because at the time, the reason I was about to quit high school is that I was. I felt like I was being suffocated under parental expectations. I was supposed to be the straight A student, supposed to get perfect test scores, and you know, that's not what I was about at that time. And I needed a hero. I needed an, someone who could inspire me. That said that, well, there's a lot more to test scores and grades. There's a lot to creativity and actually producing content. And it was important for me to hear that from my father. And my parents, when, you know, honestly, they were a large source of the parental expectations that right. I was struggling with. Talking with uh, Ken Ono, who is professor of math and computer science at Emory University. His memoir is called My Search for Ramanujan on Science Friday from PRI, Public Radio International. So that's, that's quite interesting. He was a bridge for you, too, I mean, in your youth. Uh, he, several times. In fact, this is why Amir... Uh, regrettably, he passed away. He, he, I w- it would have been wonderful he, if he could be here with us today. Yeah. Uh, Ramanujan helped me as a teenager recognize that my parents looked up to someone like Ramanujan, who was a two-time college dropout. And later in college, I had a great professor, Paul Sally, at the University of Chicago, who helps, who helped, I, w- I almost want to say rescue me as a senior, and he helped me get into graduate school. Right. And that was shortly after... Uh, the Nova special about Ramanujan aired. And then lastly, as a graduate student, my advisor, who um, really turned me on to mathematics, there's a difference between being good at mathematics and then being passionate about the subject. Professor Gordon helped me find that passion, and one of our first, one of the first steps along the way was reading the biography, The Man Who Knew Infinity, which came out uh, when I was in graduate school, and that's the book that the mm. film is based on, and and you're well, the and you're the advisor. The I'm the advisor, the, and I have to say, I'm an accidental uh, associate producer. It's it's been, a, <laughs> you know, I'll be sorry to see see the fil- the theatrical end run because um, it's been two it's, wonderful it's, years. It's hard making a movie, isn't it? Think of the oh, you have, oh, it's unbelievable yeah. how many moving parts there are. Yeah, but they've done, done a little of that. Um, how would how would you rate? Where would where is Ramanujan stand on all of mathematicians? I mean, he died at like, thirty two. He died at thirty two, right? So I this actually write a chapter about this at the end of my book in the epilogue, and um, it's very difficult to rank mathematicians. It's hard to rank anything. Yeah. How do you rank colleges? How do right. you rank basketball players? 
So there are many different kinds of mathematicians. You could be a theory builder. You could be someone who's whip smart, able to solve problems much more quickly than anyone else. Or you could be someone who can borrow ideas from one area of science and apply them in another. These are all ways in which you can be world class. But in Ramanujan, we have something completely different. We have an incomplete prophet. He died young. He left behind three notebooks that we've been mining 100 years after his death. And just think about it. We have been studying his notebooks for 100 years, and we are still learning about the full potential of his ideas. So as an anticipator of the future, as someone whose ideas mean a lot for the future of science, mm. there's, I, I'm not sure Ramanujan has an equal. Well, we, you know, you hope now that the, the, the biopic uh, about Ramanujan, the man who knew infinity, which is in theaters now, you hope this will create some sort of buzz. Oh, because absolutely. Because uh, ask anybody who, you know, who's not in the field of mathematics, they've never, never heard of it. That's right. Well, I'm delighted to say that today um, is the opening day for the wide release of The Man Who Knew Infinity. So if you're listening to me now, please go and see the film tonight. We think that Ramanujan should be a household name. Think Isaac Newton to England. Why does Ramanujan matter? Well, we've talked about the science. Of course, to mathematicians like me, he matters. But what he symbolizes is, is much greater. What he symbolizes is um, that greatness can be found in the most unforgiving of circumstances. And it's the responsibility of teachers and mentors alike to first recognize that talent mm -hmm. and then find a way to nurture it. Um, why is this super important today, and in particular for this show? So science usually proceeds by the work of thousands, slowly adding to a body of work. Mm -hmm. But as I've said just a moment ago, every once in a while, some people come along and they propel, propel knowledge further. They're rare. And that's what we have in Ramanujan. We, we can go on talking with the Ken Ono forever. He also has a memoir called My Search for Ramanujan. And the, as he says, the film opens today, The Man Who Knew Infinity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ira. For taking time to be with us today.